Dear colleagues, I would like to share this presentation with you, which has the title Evaluation of the Safety Braking Distance Method for the Application of Autonomous Vehicle Using Prescam. Authored by me, Karim Al Badri, and supervised by Hakan Bashargan. According to the official estimate provided in the references, almost 400,000 pedestrians die each year around the world in the road accidents. This depicts the high need for improved and efficient performing pedestrian collision avoidance systems for cars that can detect and avoid collision with pedestrians on time. As a result, we notice that there is a huge number of research papers concentrating on developing a pedestrian collision avoidance system because it is a hot topic that focuses on decreasing the number of fatal accidents. In 2011, European Commission's road safety program was introduced. The goal of this program is to decline the number of accidents to half. This goal was a target for many companies in the last few years. In addition, the car companies do not want to replace the driver. They want to create a new assistance function that increases the level of automation in the car to increase the safety. There are six levels of driving automation illustrated in this figure. One of the applications of pedestrian collision avoidance is adaptive cruise control, which shown in this figure. This application divides the distance between front vehicle and ego vehicle or autonomous vehicle into several regions. And the action of the autonomous vehicle is done according to this distance. For example, alarm, braking, etc. That's why we need to focus on this distance and find the best way of calculating this distance, which give us good results. Here we can see also the adaptive cruise control application in real world. It should be mentioned here that this distance used in adaptive cruise control is the stopping distance, which consists of two distances, reaction distance and the braking distance. The reaction distance is depending on the reaction time of the driver, which differ according to his age. In the case of autonomous vehicles, the reaction time is constant, 0.5. So the reaction distance is constant as well. For, the, for that reason, we will concentrate on braking distance. In this paper, two methods are used for calculating the braking distance as shown in this slide, the basic method and complex method. For basic method, we will consider good tires and the brakes. Uh, this method, uh, just velocity and friction are considered in order to calculate the braking distance. While in case of complex method, it is based on vehicle dynamics, road conditions, and external variables as shown in this equation. After applying a range of speed from 10 to 180 km per hour with different road condition from 0 0.1 to 1, to the basic and complex equation, we get the following figures. Where 0 0.1 means ice road, while 0 0.9 means dry asphalt. We notice that the highest braking distance appear in the case of 180 km per hour with road condition 0 0.1. The braking distance of a basic equation reach 1,300 meter. That's happened because uh, we consider the speed and the friction only. While in complex equation, uh, which take the vehicle dynamics, the distance approximately 284 uh, meter. In this research, a pre-scan software was employed, which is a simulation tool that includes a scenario preprocessor with a graphical user interface as well as runtime environment for scenario execution. The simulations architecture is seen in this figure. The pre-scan includes a road and vehicle model with MATLAB simulating controlling the car. The vehicle's output and states uh, have been sent to MATLAB simulating, which contains the braking function. There are four steps should be done in each project for Prescan. First of all, make the realistic scenario, set up appropriate uh, control systems, then model the sensor system, and finally perform the experiment. Uh, the vehicle used in this uh, research is a Citroen C3 hatchback vehicle model with parameters shown in this slide. 
The simulation uh, road is a dry asphalt straight road with two lanes. So the road condition is approximately uh, 0.8, where the width uh, of the lane is 3.5 meter and the length of the road is approximately 300 meter. Several simulations have been also uh, run with different velocity. So the results shown in this table. The data for this figure is acquired uh, after executing pre-scan scenario, which includes a uh, car traveling constant speed uh, and connecting to the MATLAB a program that uh, calculates the braking distance. So the relationship between the velocity and distance travel after braking at one speed, 80 km per hour in simulation result is shown in this figure. And we notice that it take approximately 28 meter to stop. After making a comparison between uh, these values, we notice that the braking distance values derived using the basic equation are always bigger than those produced from other two approaches, as demonstrated in the in this figure and uh, in the table mentioned before. For velocities less than 100 km per hour, however, the simulation results of the braking system are smaller than others. Nevertheless, for velocity larger than 120 km per hour, the last braking distance is nearly the same of simulation and complex techniques. For speeds larger than 120 km per hour, the braking distance starts to grow over the complex approach. As conclusion, two alternative ways considered in this study for calculating braking distance, basic way uh, based on velocity and friction and complex technique based on vehicle dynamics. The major goal of this project was to develop uh, a method for autonomous vehicles to continuously map the road profile and compute braking distance based on the road's roughness. At the same time, the simulation was created in pre-scan vehicle uh, simulation environment to determine the braking distance for the vehicle under consideration. The, these simulation findings are compared to two methodologies and findings demonstrate that the braking distance is reduced in simulations at lower speeds while simulations results are between these two methods in higher velocity. Future research should be devoted to the development of novel forward collision warning and avoidance systems by considering safety braking distance. References is attached here. And finally, uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please let me know. Thank you.